Hi everyone, I'm Nina Kaskar, or Miss Scarlet in the Study, and welcome to another episode of Blinded by Nostalgia. This is the series where I take movies, games, and TV shows that we enjoyed in our childhoods and review them as an adult. This episode's topic was actually brought up multiple times during our Twitch streams, and I thought it would be fun to revisit. We're talking about Halloween Town. I watched Halloween Town forever ago, and I was not impressed by it at all. I truly never understood the hype, so I thought, what better time to rewatch than during spooky season? So let's dive into my new thoughts on Halloween Town. The movie starts out on Halloween night, shocker, and not even two minutes in, we are introduced to the most angsty teen ever, Marnie. She shoves her brother for no apparent reason and then begs her mom to let her go out on Halloween night because she's 13 and practically a grown up. It's really funny that that's how you think when you're 13 and then you become an adult and watch this movie and are like, ma'am, no, you are a child. She says that she's old enough to make her own choices and then asks her friends to back her up and then her one friend says, is there an age for that? And honestly, this girl gets it. I'm well into my 20s and I'm beginning to think there's not gonna be an age where I'm comfortable making my own choices. We are introduced to the family through Marnie's disrespectful ranting. She points out her sister, Sophie, who she compares to a wall ornament for the sole reason that she doesn't go trick-or-treating like the other kids. Dylan, the brother that got yeeted across the room earlier, interrupts and says that it's probably a good thing they don't celebrate Halloween because candy rots your teeth. He's clearly the cool kid in school. I actually think this opening is fairly well written for a Disney Channel movie, especially one that I remember being incredibly cheesy. I was definitely sympathetic towards the mother that has to deal with an angsty teen and a kiss-up son when she only has one rule that only applies to one night of the year. I was sympathetic. And then she tells Sophie, the cutest, most unproblematic child in this whole movie, that she can't have a cookie. You're not letting your kids celebrate Halloween and then on top of that, not gonna let them have one cookie? Anyway, we are then introduced to the main character of the movie. I know you thought Marnie was the main character, but no. The queen herself, Debbie Reynolds, comes stepping off a flying bus. First of all, what an entrance, what style, what grace. She 100% stole the show this entire movie. She comes in and spreads Halloween joy all over the house. She's like Santa, but for spooky season. She gives the kids candy and lets them dress up against their mother's wishes and then reads them a book about Halloween Town. Oh my gosh, that's the name of the movie! Grandma keeps sending Marnie these telepathic messages that are not getting through her teenage skull. Like, homegirl, connect the dots. Were you just holding off for grandma to bust through the door and be like, you're a witch, Marnie? When reading the book, they even see a picture of a witch that Sophie points out looks exactly like Marnie. First of all, no it does not. It literally looks nothing like her, but say that it did. Connect the dots. After story time, Grandma Cromwell goes down to the kitchen to talk to her daughter about the trouble in Halloween Town and Marnie's witch powers. Yeah, in case it wasn't obvious already, they're all witches. They have an argument which Marnie overhears and then immediately runs to tell her brother Dylan. If I just overheard a conversation that I might have witch powers, I would go talk to the two powerful women standing in my kitchen that would know all the answers to my questions, rather than talking to my skeptical, non-believing brother. But that's just me, a non-angsty non-teen. Marnie tells Dylan everything she overheard and they leave to sneak onto the bus to Halloween Town. And I guess magic buses don't have alarms because they somehow snuck in through the emergency exit door without being caught. I'm actually gonna take a moment to put my sarcasm away for a second and acknowledge that I don't remember Halloween Town like this. The second they get off the bus, you're instantly transported to this new place where you're learning new information alongside these kids. And like I mentioned before, it's not as cheesy as I had it in my head. Yes, a lot of it is dated, but the stylized makeup actually doesn't seem too out of place as opposed to The Witches, which I reviewed in a previous episode. This is meant to be a civilized, non-scary version of the spirit of Halloween, and... Man, that is so wholesome. As Marnie and Dylan take everything in, they notice that Sophie somehow snuck onto the bus with them without anyone noticing. This goes on my long list of reasons why I think Sophie should live with Grandma in Halloween Town and live a very cool life, and then leave her disrespectful siblings in the mortal world. We then meet the mayor of Halloween Town, Calabar, who looks like how I imagine Gargamel would have looked in his youth when he had hair. And this man. 
instant sketchy vibes. The kids take a ride with Benny, the skeleton taxi driver, who I think I'm in love with now if I'm being totally transparent with you guys. What I really do like about this portion of the movie is that Marnie and Dylan have very different approaches to how they understand this new world, just like the audience does. And this is so cool because you could be watching this movie and taking in its atmosphere like Marnie and fully immersing yourself in this world, or you could be like Dylan, who doesn't necessarily believe everything that he sees, or I guess you could be a Sophie who's just along for the ride. Once arriving at the Cromwell house, we get the whole setup as to what will be our main conflict. There's an evil force, the worst is yet to come, Cromwell magical save the day, etc, etc, etc. And while we're having a blast just filling a talisman with witch's brew, mom is at home just now figuring out that all of her kids are missing. I love the confidence she has that her mother has something to do with this and that the kids didn't just sneak out to go trick-or-treating or were actually kidnapped. I mean, what would have happened if she flew all the way to Halloween Town only to find out that Grandma has no idea what she's talking about and the kids weren't there? She would have been wasting precious time! Luckily, that's not the actual case, I just like overanalyzing situations. Anyway, Mom is here to take her kids back to the safety of their Halloween-free lives, but she can't get bus tickets. So Dylan straight up tries to parent trap his mom and the mayor by saying he seems like a nice guy and he could probably help us out. Because that's what mayors are for, helping you with bad customer service and public transportation issues. And honestly, this whole set mom up with the mayor thing kind of works because cue awkward romantic time. Grandma's off on her own and runs into this guy, Luke, who I still don't know if he was trying to hit on her or threaten her. Luke takes her to see this evil being, and in this crazy did-not-see-that-coming turn of events, both mom and grandma end up magic paralyzed. The third act of this movie is probably my least favorite because we follow the overly confident kids as they try to save the day and say quirky things like, we're Cromwells, together we can conquer anything. First stop, the hair salon, where Dylan puts a bald spot in this poor werewolf's head. Then they go and harass this ghost man who's just trying to enjoy his day at the gym and then steal his sweat and leave without apologizing. The audacity. And finally, on the list of businesses that are single-handedly ruined by these children, they stop by the dentist's office to steal a vampire fang. They mix together their concoction and fill up the talisman, and this part I actually like because Sophie proves that she's the best of the siblings and honestly the better witch because she actually remembers the spell unlike Marnie who couldn't have been bothered to write this down before. For someone who is so eager to train to become a witch, she doesn't take very good notes. After chanting, the talisman is lit and then the whole town is immediately taken over by the evil being who reveals himself to be, gasp, Calabar. I told you, sketchy vibes. While he makes his dramatic speech, Luke and Marnie work together so that Marnie can sneak away to install the talisman and save the day. She doesn't actually install it though. It falls out of her hand and by some power of friendship or family, it falls right into the slot, therefore waking up all the paralyzed people. They all celebrate a little too early and then Gargamel, I mean Calabar, gets up and we are blessed with this wholesome family moment where the Cromwells hold hands and take him down together. I also love that no one else in Halloween Town thought to help them. They all just stand around like this is some Renfest performance that they paid good money for. Anyway, we get a lovely fairy tale ending where Mom and Marnie forgive each other, Luke asks Marnie out on a date, yes, this came completely out of left field, and Grandma decides to go back to the real world with them so that it can be one big happy family living a very boring, very non-magical life. Now we have to decide whether fans of Halloween Town are blinded by nostalgia or if this is genuinely a good movie that has stood the test of time. I'm going to just say that this movie is not even remotely close to being as unbearable as 10 year old me thought it was. It's also still not a movie that I personally see myself re-watching, especially when people say that this is one of the all-time classic Halloween movies. With that being said, it holds up by the slimmest of margins. While the fashion may scream 1998, I can still see people watching this for the first time in 2020 with no nostalgic bias and actually enjoying it. If you want a more cute and whimsical Halloween movie, this is great for you. I personally don't think there's a lot of those out there. It can also get you into that autumn fall vibe without being dark and scary. So no, while it is not one of my personal favorites, I don't think that you're blinded by nostalgia if you're still a fan. All around wholesome experience. Let me know your thoughts on whether you think it holds up or not in the comments. I am very curious to hear everyone's opinion on this one. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this, please hit subscribe. I put out new videos every single week and you don't want to miss out on the rest of the Blinded by Nostalgia series. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, my lovely people, and I will see you in the next video.